Hi there everyone, I'm meteorologist Patrick Hammer and we are celebrating Earth Day and we're talking to NASA today. Now when you think about NASA, you often think about spaceships and astronauts, but do you know that NASA has the greatest collection of Earth scientists and a collection of dozens of satellites that they use to monitor our globe and also our climate and to look and study about climatic changes that have been taking place over the 53 year history of Earth Day. So today we're lucky to be joined by Karen St. James, who's the director of NASA Earth Science. Uh, good day, uh, Karen. Thank you for joining us on this uh, Earth Day. Hey, tell me a little bit, um, you know, what, on this day that is, you know, I remember it started in 1970. I remember it because I was born that year. Um, what has NASA really learned in those years uh, about our climate and the tools that you have uh, that, have, that many of us don't really know that are available to you and how this climate is evolving and changing? Yeah, thank you. We NASA uses that unique vantage point of space that allows us to see the entire globe, to look down and study the oceans, the land, the ice, and the atmosphere. And over that period, since the first Earth Day, we've learned an awful lot about how the Earth system is changing. And not just what is happening, but why it's happening. And that really helps us project into the future. Okay, so one of the headlines this year uh, has been uh, out west, uh, California. And California has historically had cycles of, of drought and has had cycles of, of heavy snow. But this year, it's almost been on steroids. Uh, the Sierra snowfall has been truly historic. Yeah. And in some cases, uh, setting records not seen uh, ever or in many years. Are you noticing some types of climate extremes that may be causing such snowfall amounts there? Yes, these are all related events. So what's happening is that excess energy from the sun that's getting trapped in the Earth's system is getting absorbed principally by our oceans. And as those oceans warm, that's leading to an intensification of the water cycle. Well, what does that mean? The, the water we use and we experience on land by, uh, as precipitation originates in the oceans and of course it gets delivered by the atmosphere. So this cycle is intensifying, meaning that in many cases, dry regions are becoming drier. We're seeing uh, more extended and intense drought in some areas. But on the other hand, precipitation events are in many cases becoming more intense also, leading to the kinds of, uh, of, of events that we experienced in California this year. Okay, now bringing it closer to home uh, here in Western New York, uh, lake effect snows here are notorious. They're common, they happen every year. But this year, I mentioned that California got these snow events. It was on steroids, I called it. We had a snow event here in uh, the latter part of November where unofficially we set what could have been a 24 hour snowfall record. We had places here that received over 74 to 81 inches of snow in about a 30 to 36 hour period. It was crazy. Um, could that be attributed to, to a climate change situation, higher precipitation totals in shorter amounts of time? Yeah, so in, uh, attributing any specific weather event to climate is a, is a challenge and something that you can really only do after the fact. But we do know that the warming is increasing the probability of these kinds of events. And of course, where you are, you have a, a, a lot of interaction with the, with the Great Lakes. And, uh, and of course, we know that the Great Lakes are also warming and we're predicting that they're going to rise as well. So yeah, these are all related events uh, that we're experiencing in different ways in communities around the country and around the world. When you bring up warming lakes, you know, our, our Lake Erie did not freeze over uh, this, this season. And that may have been one of the reasons why uh, our Christmas blizzard uh, was so bad. Uh, as you may have heard, 49 people lost their lives. The lake was wide open, so a blizzard turned into kind of a lake effect event, which just prolonged the whole thing. So I think you bring up a good point. A warmer climate, a warmer lake, 
more opportunities paradoxically for more snow, right? Because you've got a warmer lake temperatures. That's right. And then of course, in the summers with warming water, that's changing the biology of the lakes as well. Sure. You know, climate change as a news story, especially when you share it with children and whatnot, it can be kind of scary sometimes when you hear about, you know, these projections. You know, what is NASA doing uh, to kind of continue to allow us a positive outlook and how we can thrive on this beautiful planet of ours? Well, it's a great question and that is exactly our objective. We work to bring the information and the understanding that we gain from that vantage point of space to communities and policymakers and agencies around the world so they can make science-informed decisions on how to mitigate the changes that we're likely to see and uh, plan to be resilient in the face of them. Karen St. Germain, thank you so much for joining us on this very happy Earth Day. Uh, from NASA, thank you very much and have a good afternoon. Thank you.